I would say that second to providing Canada the defence it needs, there is not an issue more seized upon by the leadership. This is Mental Health Week in Canada, and it so happens that Friday is also the first National Day of Honour. It's a day set aside to acknowledge Canada's military service in Afghanistan. The timing is a coincidence, but right now, mental health is the military's new battlefield. There's been a rash of suicides in recent months, and while each of them comes with its own set of circumstances, they have a question in common. Could their deaths have been avoided? Here's Joanna Remiliotos. To whom it may concern, this is an official suicide note by Leona Donna McEachern. There's something wrong. It was Christmas Day when Tom McEachern found his wife's note. There's something wrong with me. I've had a headache for months. The I'm words were desperate. I'm not normal since military veteran files. I have anxiety. The tone detached. The defeated voice of someone who saw no other way out. I have anxiety. I'm scared. I hate my life. I wanted to end my life for quite some time. When I saw the letter, well, I mean, I swore. <laughs> and, uh, picked up the phone, you know. Uh, it's, it's what people describe that sinking feeling. That's, <laughs> it's that sinking feeling, the heart sinks. Retired Corporal Leona McEachern had left just an hour before to take a drive, she said. Tom immediately called the police frantic to find her before it was too late. But it already was. Leona had already driven to a nearby highway, had already swerved her car into a tractor trailer in the opposite lane. She died at the scene. They put me on hold and came back on the phone and said, <laughs> someone will be by the house shortly. Uh, obviously, they don't tell you on the phone, but uh, it was within an hour we had to police officers at the door to give us the bad news. Tom was at home with their nine-year-old daughter. It was broken to her as uh, mom's been in a car accident and didn't make it. And uh, her only response at the time was, uh, why on Christmas Day? <laughs> She loved her daughter. She always had a game or an activity or a song. A devoted mother. The life of a party. Leona McEachern had a thirst for adventure too. It's what led her to the Canadian Armed Forces where she served as a military police officer for more than 20 years. Her future was bright, but there were dark moments too. Bouts of depression that would become much worse. I think what really derailed it was that she was having a great career um, up until she uh, pursued a complaint of sexual harassment against a superior uh, officer. She had also charged as a military policewoman someone with impaired driving who was of a higher rank and the pressure was on not to pursue those charges. The pressure grew to the point Leona was released involuntarily from the military. She fought her dismissal, taking it to the Canadian Human Rights Commission, which ruled in her favour. The military allowed her back in. Well, they let her back in, but they didn't let her get back to where she was. And it was a constant fight all the way along. And that was devastating. This is what came up time and time again. The fight to restore her rank, her pay, her pension, became bogged down in years of endless paperwork and appeals. The depression resurfaced. She saw a padre on the base, but it was only when Leona retired in defeat 13 years later that Veterans Affairs agreed to pay for a psychologist who diagnosed her with PTSD as a result of her protracted battle with the military. I think it's sad that they couldn't identify at certain points uh, that they had someone here in mental distress. It didn't come until very late um, in the whole process. What kind of impact did that have on her? Toward the end, she became helpless and desperate.
Leona McEachern's story is as individual as it is tragic, but her spiral to suicide echoes across the country. In the last few months, nine other soldiers have killed themselves, three in the span of three days. A troubling coincidence or a disturbing sign the military has a mental health crisis on its hands. Good, how are you? Good to meet General you. Tom Lawson is chief of the defence staff of the Canadian Armed Forces. The military, he says, is still trying to come to grips with what went so wrong. Every suicide is a, is a heart-wrenching story and it just rips families apart. And for an organization like ours that's based on camaraderie, uh, we all look inwards and see if there's anything we missed, if there's anything we could have done. The military's latest statistics reveal 43 suicides in its ranks between 2010 and 2012. That rate is on par with the general population, but doesn't include reservists, retired vets or women. A deeper analysis of those numbers suggests the risk of suicide is higher, one and a half times higher for male soldiers who left the military. What's more, the Canadian Forces is still probing nearly 50 other suspected suicides, some dating back to 2008. Do you consider this a crisis? Um, a crisis I don't think is a good term to use. I think what we need to focus on is that this is a, a manifestation of mental health uh, issues, uh, mental illness, and, uh, and we have put in place a program that here in 2014 is one that I'm confident is world class. It's a very good program, but we've got to get people into it if they can be helped by it. If you have thoughts of suicide, help is immediately available. It's why General Lawson released this video last December, as the suicides were spiking, to tackle a warrior culture that still stigmatizes mental illness. Tell me about the stigma. Uh, you're, you're obviously acknowledging that it exists. How pervasive is the, is the problem? Well, I think it's pervasive. Uh, if, if there are people out there with, uh, with broken arms and uh, broken legs, uh, they will present. Uh, but we've been taught in the military, uh, we've been taught to a certain extent in society not to complain about things that are unseen. Uh, half of these people who committed suicide last year uh, had not put their hand up to, to come in and use the mental health services that we've got. So that's why we've done so much work uh, on uh, trying to reduce the, the stigma around presenting with mental health issues. I, I did not feel myself. It's why a few weeks ago the military released a new video with testimonials from soldiers who did come forward with their struggles. I've had four subsequent promotions to my first seeking help. We have world-class programs and services that are here to help you when you need them. See, that actually kind of pisses me off because I've gone forward many times and when you go forward and somebody sits there and beats it down with a two by four, you go forward less often. Right up here. Oh. Jason Lamont is a medic right oh. who served in some of the deadliest combat in Afghanistan, who displayed such remarkable courage in one particularly horrific firefight that he was awarded the Medal of Valor. Every moment is, is like, like, like you're fighting demons. It's like there's something inside of you that really wants to mess with you and your day and your mind and your body and do everything that you don't want it to do. And you're constantly fighting that off. Corporal Jason Carl Allen Lamont. Jason returned home in 2006, a war hero, but a broken one. His life ever since has been blackened by nightmares, flashbacks, and a military he says did little to help. What was it like navigating the system when you were falling apart? Um, terrible. No, on, from my experiences, it was absolutely disgusting. It was terrible. Um, nobody really knew what to do. Nobody knew how to help, and it, you can. There was huge flaws, and everyone kind of knew it. The military diagnosed Jason with PTSD, but the support to help him access counseling or even the money to pay for it was sporadic. At one point, he waited a year for a call back from the support unit overseeing his case. I've been homeless four times since being back from Afghanistan, and three of those times I was in the military, actively serving. And that, 
I never thought in my life I'd ever be in a situation like that, let alone while well, I was an active member of the military, you know. A decorated soldier. A decorated, it's just any soldier. You know, it shouldn't happen to anybody. And just uh, when you have your eyes open and you're ready to catch it, you'll catch it easier. Jason's road to recovery has been slow. He eventually yeah. began to see a psychiatrist and a psychologist regularly. <laughs> but there has been more turmoil along the way. His marriage fell apart, but he has held on to his nine-year-old son, Liam, who he nice. says has been a lifeline. See? He's the reason why I'm alive today. It happens when you're playing. If I didn't have Liam, if I didn't have that reason to live, um, I probably would have ended up killing myself too. So, yeah. But when you were hearing about soldiers who wait for a year to get called back, how do you reconcile that? What I can say is that if someone presents today uh, with a mental illness that they've been feeling they may have, uh, they will likely see someone before the end of the day uh, and uh, be into treatment within weeks. Is this a new change? Uh, this is something that's been getting better and better in, in recent years. The military hasn't turned a blind eye. In response to a rising number of cases of PTSD, it has dramatically expanded its mental health structure in the last decade doubling its mental health staff and opening 24 units like this where soldiers are posted to get help managing their mental illness. But in a recent report, Canada's military ombudsman found those units operate with insufficient staff numbers and staff that have inadequate skill and knowledge for the job. And in earlier probes, the ombudsman found a chronic shortfall of specialists like psychiatrists and psychologists in the military overall. That shortfall, he found, had a profound effect on soldiers who saw the lack of sufficient help as an outright betrayal. We've got to continue to strengthen the network that looks after our, our men and women in uniform. And the recent suicides have been an impetus. The military has ramped up its efforts to fill dozens of mental health care posts that have been vacant for years. Do you believe you're doing enough? Second to the defense of Canada, there is no higher priority. It can be no higher. The snow has finally melted on Leona McEachern's gravesite. And since her suicide on Christmas Day, her husband now bears her cross. I think she chose the day intentionally um, to make it a point. It was a difficult choice, but Tom won't let his wife's plea be buried with her. It's why he agreed to testify recently at a standing committee on veterans affairs. Mr. McEachern, we are extremely sorry for your loss, sir. Uh, we really feel for you and your entire family for your loss. One of the many government groups scrutinizing how the military treats its own at their most vulnerable. So it's no real secret that we have a problem. There was no proper identification, referral mechanism, or specialized care available. That the opportunity was there at many touch points to make a difference and possibly save a life. We are now adjourned. The most difficult part, I think, is is having to sort of expose your life and yourself and your emotions to the country. That being said, it's, um, it's a story that I think needs to be told. Well, this is the first time we've been back here, but obviously this is where the car landed. Pieces of it here. At the site of his wife's death, shattered bits of her vehicle still strewn the field. How do you feel being out here? It's actually strangely comforting. It provides a bit of closure in a way. Do you think your wife's death could have been avoided? I think it may have been had the intervention come early on and early enough. Had it not got bogged down in paperwork and bureaucracy, it's just sad, you know. And we thought, and I think even she thought, going through the process, that it was going to work out, that something would be there because she had, despite her challenges, she had great faith in the system and the military system. We have to act on this. We, we, it's, it's just not an option to allow this to continue. And I've said it before and I'm, I'll say it again, more of these types of tragedies are going to happen in the coming months if we don't get it together really quickly. In its own way, 
Leona McEachern's death on a stretch of highway on Christmas Day was her final appeal. Her family hopes it doesn't end up being a futile one too. Joanna Vermiliotis, CBC News, Calgary.